Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to the studio today. I'm going to be talking to you about click tracks, playing to a click, which is why our little monkey is down here. Say hello to monkey. I'm just going to shoot him off to the side here. Now playing with a click track is really super important. Uh, sometimes people are a little bit resistant to it, but we really need to learn how to do it, especially when we're playing rhythmic sections or multi-tracking. Um, now, I'm going to take you through four different things. First of all, how to create a click track. Uh, second, how to turn it on and off while you're in a session, while you're playing and while you're recording. And then I'm going to uh, show you how to adjust various features of it, um, like adjusting the meter and the tempo. And um, yes, that last one was the fourth one, the tempo and how to automate it. So let's start by having a look at our session over here. This is how I normally set up my session. I've got my master at the top with a couple of things there. I've got all my auxiliaries, instruments, and reverb and delay. Then I've got my MIDI wave, MIDI wave, MIDI wave, MIDI wave, MIDI wave. All right, just all the way down there, just ready for me to start playing things into. The only thing that I'm missing here is the click, the metronome. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways of how to do that. You can either do it manually by creating an auxiliary and loading an instrument which is your click but I'll show you a much quicker and easier way so up here we've got the menu bar go to track all the way down the bottom create click track lo and behold it does it all for you it's created a mono auxiliary track and it's already loaded the instrument click in there now let me just show you what that looks like here's click and um, we've got our loaded already, just our very basic Pro Tools classic click. And I'll just show you what that sounds like. Minus the magpies out the back, but that's okay. So here we have uh, also a flashing light, which is really great if you wanted to actually just mute the click track. It's still clicking away, but you can just see a flashing light. So if it annoys you, the sound of it, and you can still get by with just watching the flashing light, go for it. Personally, I like to have it on. I've gotten quite used to it over the years. I'll just close that up a little bit. You can adjust the volume of the click, moving it around like that, just on the track. I'll just press Option on the volume. Whoops, that one there, to bring it back to normal volume. And you can adjust the volume of each accent and the following three. We can bring them right back like that. I mean there's various things you can do. I mean, you can play around with these guys down here and whatnot. You can change the actual sound of each one of them and muck around with all that. But I'm just going to leave it as is for now because we're not really focused on that. So I'll leave that there. We've created our click track. It's ready to go. I'm just playing now. I'm going to stop. Go back to the beginning by pressing return. Now, if I was to play along and I didn't want the click playing while I'm going, all I have to do is either press mute or there's a little feature where you can turn the metronome on and off. You can either click here or and that's just the light. Fantastic. I just learned something new and so did you. On the numbers pad, click number seven. And it's still playing, but the metronome is just turned off. Numbers pad seven. Numbers pad seven. All right, so that is how you can turn it off and on again through your recording. Okay, that's good. So we've learned how to create it. We've learned how to turn it on and off. We've learned how to mute it and adjust the volume. Now I just want to show you that we can change the meter and we can change how many um, or how fast it clicks to the meter and whatnot. So let's go and have a look at the the meter track over here and we can press we're at the very beginning so we just press plus here the default here in this blue track you can see is 4-4 four, four, just standard time and if I click on that plus sign we come up here you can change the meter if you want and you can change it right at the beginning of the mix or you can change it further down the track anywhere along the timeline that you like by choosing here um, you can even go and choose there and press plus and it will change the meter at that point. You can see this time location reflects exactly where your cursor is. But let's let's go back to the beginning. 
Let's press enter plus and we want to make it six eight now I've left the click on crotchets at the moment it's quarter beat and have a listen to what that sounds like now now to you and me that sounds like three four one two three one two three because we left it on crotchets okay but I can double click on that little yellow triangle and we can go back into this 6-8. An eighth beat is a quaver, it's a quarter note. So we can actually change our click to reflect that as well. And we change it to quarter note. So the way I did that, it was on quarter note. I just click on it and go down and change it to one eighth note. And we can go all the way to 16th notes and we can even make them dotted if we wanted to. So let's go to one eighth notes and we'll play and hear what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's six, eight. But I guess that's mad. I guess, well, unless you wanted to change the tempo down to 77 or something like that. Two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you might want to just do it with um, quavers in there, but I find it really messy. And it's sort of it's a bit clouding. So what I can do, what I normally do is I normally just keep it on crotchets and just deal with it. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I just play along like that. Alright? Now, you just got a sneak preview into my next what's the name? point and that is how to change the tempo of your click and it is up here you can either do it in this transport window in this transport window you've got all sorts of different features and whatnot and uh, over here on this last line you have the tempo and you can change the actual um, click here as well if you wanted to uh, now I've got it set at 95 right now because that's just what I set it at and I can either click on it once and type in and press enter what I want it to be or I can just drag it up and down so let's just leave it at 120 or another way of doing it let's just move that over here is well you can change the tempo in this timeline here and you can move that tempo around in the song sort of automated. Let's just bring the monkey back in for a little while because he's kind of cool. He's going to disappear in a second. Ready? Now, underneath here, you've got a dude with um, a stick, like the, the uh, conductor of an orchestra. It's a baton. So what you can do is you can click on that little dude and our tempo has changed over here. So I'll click back again. And over here, you've got manual tempo written up here where I have changed it up and down. Okay, right? Now, I'll just move this over so it's all together. Manual tempo there. As soon as I click the conductor, it goes. Manual tempo disappears and it's like an automatic tempo. It doesn't say automatic. Um, but, but what you can do, you can still adjust it here if you like. But what you can do now is you can change it within the mix. So like what we did with meter let's go in and go plus bpm beats per minute and you can change the resolution there as well but let's just leave it on quarter notes um we can change it to 120 right there and guess what we can change it over here as well plus 110 so we've got two tempo changes at that point. Now let's just have a listen. You hear a slight slowdown. Let's just change that to be up 145. You can see already that the grid changes accordingly because it's quicker. So 120, 120, 120, 120. Straight away. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So we can choose to have it 
145 for a couple of bars or you know just four bars and then we'll change it back to tempo 110 at that point all right so we 120 145 for four bars and then down to 110 so you can actually follow a score quite accurately with this if you wanted to and just move it around 145 fairly quickly and then back to 110. In fact, what we're going to do at this point here, at 145, we're going to change the meter to be 4, 4. And we're going to go back at this point to 6, 8. Now let's have a listen. Hang on, let's go back here. And so I've got actually um, three bars there at the moment now. I can move that and make it four bars. Can I move this? I can't move my meter, but I can move my tempo. All right. So that's great. Let's just, well, we'll leave them for now. And just further along, we can do something else. Now, over next to the tempo over here, you can click on the arrow and it opens up a whole new field and you can see our tempo changes in a block and guess what we can change it by going up and down like that isn't that nice or you can click on that little triangle and move that tempo point up and down I'll just leave it at 150 now this has gone to 106 because I moved the entire lot but let's just say I wanted to do a slow down now over here one of our tools is a line tool uh, it doesn't need to be a line tool, we can do freehand, but for now we're just going to do a line tool and we can draw our tempo changes in here. So from this point I wanted to speed up gradually like this, so I just click and drag a line and just release it. And as you can see it's not smooth, but it's MIDI and it doesn't need to be with a tempo change. So if I was to um, scroll in by going down here and pressing option and scroll. And I've zoomed in a little bit and I'll hold shift and scroll so we can see the whole lot. You can see the resolution is um, quite small and it's not bad. So you, let's have a listen. Now it's still 6.8 but it's speeding up gradually. See that? Very usable. You could so use that. And let's just say you wanted to finish off a song with gradually slowing it down. So all your performers will be following this click and they'll be slowing down together accurately. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Instead of ending up in a mess at the end. So there you go. We have learned how to create a click track over here. And we have learned how to turn the click on and off by pressing numbers pad 7. And we have learned how to adjust the meter over here in the blue bar, 4468 or whatever you like, 1219. And we have learned how to adjust the tempo and all the volumes and things like that. So a little bit of automation. So there you go, playing with a click track. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy composing.